The fruit of my mouth, I will bless you. As heaven resounds, I will praise you. With the fruit of my mouth, I will love you. As heaven resounds, I will bless you. With the fruit of my mouth, I will love you. As heaven resounds, I will bless you with the fruit of my mouth. We'll love you. As heaven resounds, I will bless you with the fruit of my mouth. I will love you. As heaven resounds, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 As heaven resounds, I will praise you. With the fruit of my mouth, I will bless you. As heaven resounds, I will praise you. With the fruit of my mouth, I will bless you. As heaven resounds, I will praise you. With the fruit of my mouth, I will as heaven resounds, yes, I will, 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 oh Jesus, I will, Jesus, I will, Jesus, I will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
majesty, your king of kings, your lord of lords. Oh, you're able, Father. Oh, God. Your ruler, Lord. Even though in the midst of, the, of it all, Father, you rule, you reign, Lord. Oh, God, we bless your name, Jesus. We praise your name, Jesus. We love your name, Jesus. We exalt your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, we love you. Oh God, we praise you, oh God. Oh God, we love you, oh Jesus. Oh hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujahs to him. Yes, just whisper the highest praise to him. Just whisper the highest praise to him. Oh, we declare your greatness, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. We declare your greatness. We honor your greatness, Jesus. I can depend on someone I can live. 
when everything is out of control You've been You've been so good, Lord Oh, you've been My way maker You've been My shelter, Lord You've been Lord, you've been Lord, you've been You've been, Lord, you've been Lord, you've been
lift you up. everything to us, Jesus. Yeah, Lord. Everything to us, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I pray for the mother that needs help. I pray for the mother, Father, that needs your guidance. She needs your ear. She needs your shoulder to lean on. I thank you, Lord, that you shall be everything to her. I thank you, Jesus, that even when the weight begins to shift and when the load seems a little bit too heavy, Father God, that you, hallelujah, God, will make their rooms, their cars, your temple, your place to dwell, Father God. I thank you, God, that you are making rough places smooth, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that you are having your way in their very lives on today. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I speak now that the hearts shall be open. I speak now that the ears shall not be shut. I speak now that the heart shall be open to your voice, shall be open to your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, that they will not ignore your voice, they will not ignore. Hallelujah. When you are in the room. Yeah, they'll know, they'll feel you when you're in the room. Yes, Lord.
begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you need me to say? And you know, I had uh, a message prepared. Kristen and I have been uh, in the series with you all about things we do in the church, why we do those things, what our response ought to do to them. And last week we dealt with offering. And we still have two parts left to this, uh, which I may combine those two parts and make them one part, but it's communion and baptism. I know not every church baptizes but it is something that Jesus himself did go through, that Jesus himself did deal with. And so I do want to talk about baptism. But today the Lord is leading me in a different direction. He's leading me to speak to a generation, to speak to a people, to speak to those of you who are in the middle of a situation where number one you feel like you've messed up you don't know if there's any coming back from this you, you've backslidden you've done wrong and you just feel like I don't even know if I'm saved anymore I don't know if I'm if I'm one of God's own anymore how could I have messed up so bad how could I have done this if I were truly a child of God. And so the Lord wants us to address that issue. And then the other issue that's even wrapped up in that is, you know, at the core of it, there are some of you out there who even believe that you're unworthy. Like you're not good enough. Like you're not enough. There are some of you who feel as though you're always, always missing the mark. You feel like you're always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. You're, you're moving too fast or you're moving too slow and somehow you miss it. And you feel so far away from God. The Lord wants to speak into your hearts today. He wants to speak into your lives today. And we're just going to flow as the Lord allows and as the Lord leads. We're going to flow and we're going to touch every one of these issues and speak into the hearts and the minds of God's people right where they are. So many of us find ourselves in a place where we've messed up time and time again. We find ourselves in a place where we're just unsure if God still loves us. And you know, some of us have even come under attack from other people. And other people have said, you know, if you were saved like you really say you are, if you really loved God like you say you do, you wouldn't do some of the things that you do. Friends, one thing that I realize and one thing that I understand is that God loves us. And, and, and even when you try and make it seem as though you're not good enough, like you're not enough, when other people try and make you seem like you're not good enough, like like you're not enough for God's grace, like you're not worthy of God's grace. Hmm, my God, my God. I want you to know that God still loves you. He 
says that you are worth his grace, worth his love, worth his very best. to start off in Romans chapter 8. And we're going to start at verse number 31. Again, this is Romans chapter 8, verse number 31. And, and, and this scripture is what I like to call healing from those who talk down on you and frown upon you and make you feel as though you're not enough. This scripture is healing from every time that you've ever made yourself feel like you're not enough, like you're not good enough. Romans 8, 31 through 39. When you get there, you'll find these words. It says, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Verse 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And then, you know, it's as if someone asked the question while the apostle was writing this, while Paul was writing this, it's as though someone stops him and asks the question, well, why is he interceding for us? What is it that he's interceding for us for? Or why does he even intercede for us? And Paul answers with this, verse number 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, he says. In all things, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, that loves us. That's why he's interceding for us. That's why he's yet praying for us, because he loves us. And because he loves us, there is nothing that can separate us. Nothing that can keep us from his love. And Paul goes on to say, Because we are more than conquerors through him that love us, because he is interceding for us, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor thing present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And friends, you know, when I look at that, I begin to see how, you know, so many people have tried to tell us that we're not good enough. They've tried to tell us over and over that we're not worth God's love, that we're not worth God saving because of our past, because of the things that we do now, because they know the type of person that we used to be. They say, you're not good enough. There are even those of you who you yourself have said, you know what, I'm not good enough. Because of the things that I've done, because of the past that I've had, because every time something happens, it seems like I always miss the mark. It seems like every time something happens, I'm a little bit uh, uh, slow or maybe I move too fast. I don't wait on the Lord. And so you begin to count yourself out and you begin to say to yourself, I'm not good enough. I'm not worth God's love. I'm not worth God's saving. I'm not worth it all. Friends, I want you to know and understand that God is not concerned with whether or not you get it right. He's not concerned with whether or not you're perfect. He's not concerned with any of these things. But you want to know what really concerns God? your heart. And we've talked about this before. God recognizes and realizes that at the heart of it, you love him. You want to do right by him. And you see, that's the reason why so many of us feel like we're not good enough. It's because in our heart, we really want to please God. In our heart, we really, really, really want to do the right thing. We want to live for God. We want to be in, in, in that, that number that says, you know what? I got it right. I did it. But friends, you know, the thing that I love about God, the thing that I love about God is this. It doesn't matter if you get it right every time. He still has love for you. And then I want to take it even a step further. I want to go even a bit deeper. You know, we've we've looked at it here in Romans. But let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And when you get to Philippians chapter 3, I want you to look at these words. Philippians chapter 3. And we'll start at verse, we'll start around verse number 12. It says this when you get there. Not as though I have already attained, either are already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Then he says in verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And friends, you know, when you look at Philippians chapter 3, I want to read it in the easy read version. Philippians 3, verse 12, it says this, I do not mean that I am exactly what God wants me to be. This is Paul again talking here. He says, I do not mean that I am exactly what God wants me to be. And I have not yet reached that goal. But I continue to trying to reach it and make it mine. That's what Christ Jesus wants me to do. It is the reason he made me. 
but it's the reason he made me his. Then verse number 13 says, brothers and sisters, I know that I still have a long way to go, but there is one thing that I do. Mm -hmm. I forget what is in the past Hallelujah. and try as hard as I can to reach the goal before me. Mm. I keep running toward the finish line to get the prize that is mine because God has called me through Christ Jesus to life up there in heaven. And so for, simply, friends, what Paul says in Philippians 3 is that, look, he's not perfect. None of us are perfect. Jesus. I want you to know and understand that, yes, you will mess up sometimes. Yes, you will go through hell, high water, and trouble. And sometimes in the midst of hell, you may slip and fall. And you may stay in that hell a little longer. You may dwell in that hell a little longer. You may take part in that hell. But the one thing that you have to do and that you have to realize is this. Even though you may slip, you may fall fall, even though you may partake for a second or a minute, whatever the case may be, even though you may not be perfect right now, you say, you know what? No, I'm not satisfied with this. I'm not happy with this. I know I can do better. So I'm going to try and do better. Hallelujah. I'm going to, I'm not going to stay in this place that I'm in. Thank and you, so Jesus. many people, so many of us we get to a place where we begin to feel as though we're not enough, mm. like we're not good enough. People try and make us feel like okay. we're not enough. We're not good enough. We're not worth God's grace, glory, and love. But the truth of the matter is, is so long as your heart is towards God and you say, God, you know what? I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I've messed up. I did some things I promised you I wouldn't do. Jesus. I've fallen in a situation that I know I had no business being in, but God, I don't want to stay like this. In my heart, I want to please you. So that's what I'm going to endeavor to do. That's what I'm going to try to do. And so we begin to press toward the mark of the high calling. Friends, I understand that sometimes it hurts you so bad when you mess up because you're like, Lord, not again. Oh, God, I've messed up again. Here it is again. Jesus. And, and for some of us, it's not like it's the second time, but it's like it's the third time, the eighth time, the fourteenth time. We've messed up again. But you know what God says? God says this. He says, listen, don't, don't, don't wallow in your mistake. Don't let your mistake get you to a place where you feel like you're not good enough. But Paul teaches us that we ought to press toward the mark of the high calling. And see, that's the thing about it. When you read Philippians chapter 3 in its entirety and you start off at the very beginning of it, the thing that Paul starts to talk about uh, is he starts off talking about, you know, if anybody should have any reason to boast in their flesh, he says, I have reason to boast in my flesh because I am an Orthodox Jew. I was born a Jew to the house of Benjamin. My parents were Jews. I was circumcised on the eighth day after I was born. And I was so devout in following the law that I persecuted Christians. Mm -hmm. And I did this and I followed the letter. No one could find any fault in my following of the law because I chased the law. And I did what the law said to do according to what Moses set forth. But then he said, so if anything, I should have reason to boast in that. He says, but no, I don't even boast in that because God came and showed me Hallelujah. even in that I was wrong. And the problem is, I hear God saying, the problem is, is that so many of us get caught up in religiousness, in religiosity, if I can make up that word, that we begin to think that we're not good enough, that we're not right, that we're not 
perfect, that we're not uh, following after God or pleasing God because we've messed up. But the thing is, is God does not care about your religion. God doesn't care if you break one commandment, four commandments, or ten commandments in a day. What he says is this, I love you. You are my child. I called Hallelujah. you for this. Thank you, Jesus. And for this reason, you are mine. So friends, I want you to know, I want you to know, no matter what anyone else says, no matter what anyone else does, don't let religion and what people think you ought to be doing, how you ought to be doing it, the way you've been taught all your life that you ought to live, if you've went contrary to that, now all of a sudden you feel as though you're not worth God's best, God's love, God's grace, then friends know that the devil is a liar. Because you are worth God's grace. You are worth God's love. My God, my God. And in verse 30 it says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Yes. And whom he called, them he also justified. Yes. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yes. What shall we then say to these things? If God before us, who can be against us? For he spared yes. not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yes. My God. God called us. He predestinated us. And he justified us even when we had nothing to be justified. Mm -hmm. Even when we weren't even worth his time, worth his son coming down to the earth to save us, to be the perfect sacrifice. God still had us on his mind. The word says, who is man, Father, that you are mindful of me? You are yes. mindful of us. Yes. That you made us a little bit lower than the angels. Who who are we? And you know, God spoke to me in prayer. He said, I, 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 I love you because I'm concerned about your soul. I'm mindful of you because I love. I am the lover of souls. I am the lover of the ones that I created. So God is mindful of you. God loves you because he, hallelujah, desires your soul. He desires to be one with your soul to be one with your spirit he desires to be in communion with you so although you may have things that come in the way that may cause you to backslide that may cause you to uh, lean to your own understanding and, and not to God's understanding hallelujah his love is still here his love yes. is still reaching out his love is still pouring out and there's so many of us that that when we mess up or we make a mistake we want to wallow and we want to allow the enemy to beat us up over the head about the very things that we've done now i'm not giving you license to go back and do it over and over again and say you know what god loves me so i can do whatever i want to do but if your heart is right if your heart is in the right place you won't want to do it again yes. but hallelujah it says that the mind is willing but the flesh is weak and although we're in we have a strong mind although we in our minds we want to do right my my God, the flesh is still under attack. The flesh is still under, if, if it's not under subjection of the spirit, it is susceptible to anything. Oh my God, to hinder it. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. But once you understand, once you come to know your Savior and understand that your Savior loves you, my God, the very thing that the devil wants you to do is, is to become condemned and to stay there where you are. Mm -hmm. He's not concerned with the sin so much because we are born into sin. We have sinful nature, but he's concerned with condemning you to keep you right there where you are, to keep you stuck and stagnant in the same place so that you won't move forward. Forward. He wants you to keep on looking back and not looking toward the high mark, the high prize, the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. If he can keep you 
line here if he can keep you wondering how in the world did I get here and God must not want to talk to me and God doesn't want me to pray to him because God doesn't want to hear from me and I should be ashamed of what I've done and I should cover myself with spiritual fig leaves and not even hide not even want to be around God and hide from God oh hallelujah Jesus, 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 but that's where we make the mistake. Mm -hmm. That's where we begin to, to forget the relationship, the God that called us into the marvelous light, the God that created us. He loves us. Yes. My God. Yes, Adam, yes, Eve, you ate the forbidden fruit. You told, God told you not to do it, but he didn't tell you to hide. Mm -hmm. Yes, you committed the sin, mm, but you had time to repent. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Yes, there are consequences to committing the sin. There's consequences to our actions, but we'll never be taken away from his love. Yes. He'll never stop providing for us. He'll never stop chasing after us. Reeling us into covenant with him. But we can't allow the enemy hmm, to continue to feed us lies. Mm. That God thinks you're unworthy of his love. Unworthy of the calling. Yeah. My God, my God, my God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God, my God. Paul said, I forget about my past. Mm -hmm. I forget about all my mistakes. Yes. I forget about all the things that have hurt me, all the things that I have been doing, and I reset and I start over. And I keep pursuing the very thing that I was pursuing before, what am I pursuing? I'm pursuing a closer relationship with God. I'm pursuing my calling. I'm pursuing my dreams. I'm pursuing my purpose. I'm pursuing those things that God has placed before me. Yes. But if I keep looking back, if I keep, how can you walk looking, walk forward looking back? With your head turned backwards. With your mind back there, back then. Thinking about, well, if I wouldn't have done this, then this wouldn't have happened. And if I shouldn't have done this, this wouldn't have happened. It happened. But my, my God says all things work together for the good of them who are the called according to his purpose. Yes. My God. How do you know you're the called? He said, I called you out of darkness mm. into his marvelous light. If you are a follower of God, you have accepted the call. The call mm, to be a Christian, the call to be a follower of Jesus. So all things work together. I don't care. I don't care how ugly, how screwed up it may be. It works together for your good. Yes. It may be ugly right now. It may not feel good. It may not look good. It may be embarrassing, downright humiliating. But it doesn't separate you from the love. That is in Christ Jesus. Yes. And because of his love, My Lord. you're redeemed. Mm -hmm. Because of his love, you are healed. Yeah. Because of his love, you are set free. You can start over. Hmm. And you can forgive yourself because you've already been forgiven. But it starts with the heart. Because God has special eyes that can see 
to the very core of the man. Yes. See beyond all the junk, the, the, the fakeness, the faces that we put up, the facades that we put up in front of people. He sees the very truth that is in our heart. And he decides if you really mean business. Yes. But he also dispenses his love and his forgiveness. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And friends, even when we look at Romans chapter 6, Hallelujah. when we go back and we look at Romans chapter 6, you, you know, it starts off by saying, what shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. My God. God forbid. This is verse 2, he says. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And I know, you know, when, when you go down and you read all of this, you know, you begin to ask her the question, well, if I'm dead to sin, then why do I keep sinning? Why do I keep messing up? Why, why, why? Friends, Paul says here that, yes, we are dead to sin. Mm -hmm. And what he means by that is that sin no longer lives in us. It is no longer our nature. Mm -hmm. It is no longer what we love to do. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, the thing I love about it is, you know, he's, he, he's as you read this passage of Scripture, and I, I want to cover this again when we deal with baptism, I want to come back to the Scripture. He talks about how when we are baptized, we, we, we share in Christ dying, his, his burial. And so when we go down in the water, we are representing the death and burial. Of Jesus Christ meaning all of our filthiness all of our sins all of that stuff is being brought down mm -hmm. to death because you know for us as humans when we go down underwater we can't live there anymore we can't breathe underwater anymore and 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 if you stay under long enough you will die oh my God. but he brings you back up he rise raises us back up and he says, then we begin to walk in the newness. I'm, I'm just running through all of chapter 6 here. He starts talking about how we begin to share and then walk in the newness of life. This is verse 4. Then we go to verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him, and that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. So we died to this world, and now we live in Christ. And we are dead from sin. And so, you know, one thing that so many of us get misunderstood, that we misunderstand, is quite simply this. What Paul is trying to get people to understand here is that once you give your life over to Christ and you come into the baptism, whether it be baptism by water or baptism of the Holy Spirit, what Paul is saying here is that once you become into the Holy Spirit and you are baptized, in the Holy Spirit, all that you've given your life to Christ, now sin does not live in you anymore. See, all before, when you sin, when you messed up, it stayed with you. It, it, it carried on with you. And it was there, and, 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 and you could see it. People could see, who people who had spiritual eyes could see that you were living in sin, that you were dead in sin. But now that you have accepted Jesus Christ, you live in him. Mm -hmm. And so when you sin, that sin doesn't stick to you anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't carry that sin around with you anymore. As a matter of fact, as he says here, we just read it. He says that, you know, that sin, we're dead to it. 
So sin is no longer a part of who we are. And, and I know you say, well, James, you know, that doesn't fully make sense. But even when you jump over to verse 15, he says again, what then shall we say? Or he says, what then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? He says again, God forbid. Then to verse 16, know ye not to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants. Ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So what Paul is simply saying here is for those of us who have it misconstrued and say, you know what? Well, I'm saved so I can mess up all that because it doesn't follow me. It doesn't live within me. No, Paul says this to each one of us who has ever thought like that. No, you are you 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 are a, a slave per se to the one that you follow, mm. to the one that you live in. If you are saved, then you strive to, to live right. You strive to live right. Doesn't mean that you'll be perfect. Doesn't mean that it's going to be right all the time. But what it means is this. It means that, you know what? I mess up, but I get back up again. I fall down, but I get back up again. I, 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 I have problems, issues. You know, I, I do things that I knew I had no business doing. But I get back up again. I don't live in my sin. I don't stay in my sin. And, and, and just in case, again, you think I'm making this up, I want to take you to the word where Paul quite clearly tells us. He tells us, verse chapters, uh, Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And I want to go to verse 9. Well, actually, let's start at or verse 18. Let's start at verse number 18, chapter 7. It says this. It says, for I know, this is Paul talking, that in me, and then in mind it has in parentheses, that, in, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Mm -hmm. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Oh so I want to pause there. What Paul is saying is, is in my human flesh, I understand that there is no good thing. Because within my human flesh, it's going to want to lean towards what feels good. Mm -hmm. Because we like pleasing our flesh. Oh we like doing what feels good to us. Mm -hmm. It's natural mm -hmm. to do what feels good mm -hmm. to us. To do something that, that does not feel good to us, it, 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 it does not make sense. Mm -hmm. For me to harm myself. People would say I was crazy, but when I go around pleasing my flesh all the time, that is the norm. Mm -hmm. So for me to go around and say, you know what, oh man, my flesh wants her, so I'm going to have her and I'm going to do what feels good to my flesh. That's the norm. But punishing ourselves by not making our flesh feel good, bringing our flesh under subjection, that's not the norm. Mm -hmm. That's not what's good. That's not what's right. So Paul says that he understands that the will to do good is there within him. Mm -hmm. He finds the will there, but how to perform that good, he can't find that. He, he, it's like when it's time to do the right thing, it, it just the, the right thing always seems to escape mm -hmm. Paul. Then he says in verse nine, number 19, for the good that I would do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. My God. For the good that I would do, I do not, hmm. but the evil which I would not do, that I do. And then verse 20, now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, I know that this 
is confusing because we just read in verse or chapter 6 that we are dead to sin. But remember again, it is our flesh, our bodies. Again, Paul is saying, sin is still there, but our spirit no longer yeah. lives and is controlled by sin. Mm -hmm. But our bodies, it dwells within our bodies. So it's, it's, it's almost as if, for those of you who have ever tried to do a diet, think of the diet as salvation, as, as living for God, as doing the will of God. But then, you know, every now and then you go into a place and uh, uh, you see that they have donuts or they have... Cravings. The, you have those cravings. Mm -hmm. You have cravings. Thank you, baby. <laughs> you have those cravings. That's your flesh. Your flesh is like, oh, I really would want a donut. You know, and, and, and for my Louisiana people, if you've ever had a Southern made donut, yes. sometimes you have a craving for a good Southern made donut, mm. a box of Southern made donuts with all the cream right at the bottom. And, and for my Northerners, I know you love Krispy Kreme. I, I, I love it too. So, so, so every now and then you get a craving for a good <clears throat> Krispy Kreme donut, but you're on this diet. Mm. You're on this diet. And sometimes... Sometimes the flesh gives in and you mess around and eat a whole box of donuts. My God. And, and you try, you know, I've been in a place where I tried to do it and hurry up and eat it so that nobody else would know. I'd get rid of the evidence. I'd put it in a trash can down the street, down the road, so that nobody would know I was snacking on, uh, for me it was Little Debbie's. And I'd always have, you know, some Little Debbie's here or there, uh, the oatmeal cream pies or, or something like that. And, and I would hide them. Hide my little wrappers so that no one would know, okay, I was a fat boy today. <laughs> I gave in to my flesh today because I'm supposed to be eating right. I'm supposed to be trying to lose weight, get in shape, be healthy. I'm supposed to be trying to live God, live for God, work for God, do these things for God. But my flesh got in the way today and I did something. That, that I had no business doing, so I try and get rid of the evidence. I try and hide it, sweep it under the rug. That's what Paul is saying here. Then you go to verse number 21, and Paul makes it all plain. He says, I find then a law mm -hmm. that when I would do good, evil is present with me. My God. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, my warring against the law of my Come mind on, Come on. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Jesus. Friends, so many of us, we get in a place where our mind wants to serve God. Mm -hmm. Our mind wants to please God. Our mind wants to do the right thing. But then... But then our bodies want to be pleased too. My God. Friends, that's, that's, that's the real issue here. And that's what, what gets us in this place where we feel like we're not good enough. Where we feel like we, we, we just can't make the mark. Friends, I want you to know that yes, you will mess up. Yes, there will be problems. Yes, there will be issues. But chase after God follow after God and he will he will see your heart that's what Paul is talking about here he's talking about your heart so friends so long as your heart is for God mm -hmm. then who can lay any charge to God's elect I mean, right after that, he goes in on chapter 8 and he says, the very first thing he says is, There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, mm -hmm. but after the Spirit. So friends, the more you begin to walk after the Spirit and crucify your flesh. Hallelujah. Then, friends, that's what makes the difference. See, friends, and, and I, know, I, I know that many of you out there, you have the heart to please God. You have the desire to please God. And that's why you feel like you're unworthy. It's because you know that you can do better. 
You know that you knew better before you even got into the situation. But friends, don't let the enemy lie to you any longer and tell you, you know you knew better. You're not saved because you knew better and you still did wrong. And then, then, then the enemy knows the word. So he'll try and say stuff like this, baby. He'll try and say, you know, didn't the Bible tell you mm. that, that he would always give you a way of escape? Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the devil will show you. He's so slick. He will show you the way of escape that you had. And you'll be like, oh, mm. doggone it. I didn't, I didn't slipped up. I knew I should have. I should have just took that phone call. I should have, you know, that would have took me away from it. I should have did this. I should have did that. The, the enemy is so slick. He will show you the way of escape that you had after the fact. And then make you feel like, see, you didn't take that way of escape. So you're not saved. You're, you're not really a Christian. You don't love the Lord the way you say you do. Friends, don't believe his lies. Mm. Don't believe it. You are a child of God. Even when you mess up, you're a child of God. You belong to the Most High God. That's right. We belong to the Most High God. And friends, don't let the enemy, like my husband, say, Steal the joy of the Lord from you. Yes. The peace of the Lord. The assurance of the Lord. Yes. That in all situations, He will help. Even when we fall, He will pick us up. I My am Lord. a living witness. Yes. When, when I, I found myself forcing situations, mm -hmm. opening doors with people that I had no business opening doors with, God still loved me. Yes. God still protected me, shielded me, covered me. Yes. And even in those situations when I was hard headed, he still let those situations be learning tools. Mm -hmm. He used them to sharpen me. He used them to perfect me. He used them to purify me, to get me on the right track. Yes. Because he loves me. And the same love that he has for me, he has the same love for you. Friends, let us pray today that you not only embrace the love that Jesus Christ has for you. Yes. But embrace the fact that you have the newness of life in him. Mm -hmm. Embrace the fact that he cares. Embrace the fact that he's always there for you. No matter if it's good, bad, ugly. However, he is there. Yes. Father, we thank you. Father, thank you. For making our thoughts brand new. Yes, Lord. Father God, I thank you, God, that we will not, my God, be controlled by our flesh, Lord. Yes. God, but we will be controlled by our spirit. We will be controlled by the law of God in our inward man. Yes, Lord. And God, although we are warring in our members and in our mind, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you shall deliver us yes. from even this sinful flesh. Yes. That you will show us the ways to crucify our flesh, Lord. Whether it be through a fast, Lord. Whether it be, my God, through through dieting, exercising, or, or reading our word. Whatever it is, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are revealing it to us. God, I thank you, God, that we are becoming stronger believers, that we are realizing that we have power, that we are realizing that we can overcome, that we are realizing that that even, hallelujah, the, the greatest in you uh, that followed you still had issues, Father God, but they never gave up on you. And they realized, Father, hallelujah, 
that your love never gives up on us. Lord, I thank you, God, for this word. I thank you, God, hallelujah, that we know now that there was no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we know now that nothing shall ever separate us from your love, neither death nor life, nor, nor angels, nor principalities, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. Yes. No height, nor height, nor depth shall be able to separate us. From your love. Yes. Father God, I know that you are able to correct our thinking. I thank you, God, that you've made your word so plain, Father God, that it's cut like a two-edged sword dividing asunder the spirit and the soul, Father. I thank you, God, that you're making everything plain. I thank you, Lord, that you're moving, hallelujah, as a revival in our spirits to show us the way because we need your guiding light to be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. Yes, God. Yes, God. And God, although it may get dark and, 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 and tiresome at times, Father, I thank you, God, that you will continue to stir up the gift within your people, that you will continue, oh God, to push them into a newness in their faith. Lord, I thank you, God. Thank you, Lord for every man, for every woman that has ever felt like they were not good enough. I thank you, God. Hallelujah, that you're correcting their thinking now, Father. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you now, Father, that they will know that they are good enough. I thank you now, Father, that they won't feel unworthy anymore. I thank you now, Father, that they won't get so down in the doldrums when they mess up, Father. But they will gird up their loins, Father, and press on towards the mark that is in you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I thank you, Lord. That they shall not be looking back at their past, remembering those things that were behind them. But they shall press forward and remember the things that you delivered them from. Father, I thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm, that they will not hoard on to their, hoard their mistakes. Hold on to their mistakes. But they will remember the blessings. Yes. Your saving grace, your mercy that endures forever. Father God, I thank you, God, that they shall look unto the hills from which cometh their help when their flesh tries to get in the way. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of self-control is resting over everyone that is listening today, that is praying with me on today. Self-control. Yes. Let it rest, root, and abide. Forever. Yes, Lord. In your life, in your marriage, in your body, in your members, in your house. Let it abide, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you, God, that it starts with the little things. Cutting back on spending. My God. Cutting back on the things because, oh, God, we want it because we see it. Yes. And because we see it, we want it, Lord. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. We may not have the money in our budget. We may not have the money in our pocket. Or our, our budget says don't spend this because we got other things to do. I thank you, Lord, that self-control will even be in those areas. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, that when, when we go to the store, Father God, that we'll be able to stick to what we went in there for, Father. I thank you, Lord, that we will not waver even in those things because it helps us, Jesus, follow after our spirit and not our flesh. I thank you, Lord, that you are chipping away these things, Father God. Hallelujah, day by day, week by week, month by month. Correcting our thinking. Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Mm. That we will not allow the cravings to rule over us. I see some people even jumping out of bed just to go get something that they saw on TV. Just to go, go satisfy a craving. Satisfy our flesh. 
Oh, hallelujah. Mm, it's not of God. You are being led by the flesh and not the spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you are correcting even those things. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, I thank you, God, that we will not follow after the images that we see, but follow after you. Yes, God. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. We renounce every hold that causes us not to follow our spirit, Lord. Follow your spirit. We want nothing to do with it, Jesus. Mm. We take back the license. We take back the keys from the enemy. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we shut the door in his face, Lord. We follow after your spirit. We chase after your spirit, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, it's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I want you to know that no matter how hard it is to turn away from the flesh, no matter how hard it gets, I want you to remember Romans chapter 8 and verse number 37, which says, Nay, in all things mm -hmm. we are more than conquerors through him that loves us so friends just know you can do it you can beat those cravings you can get past that flesh that sin that is weighing you down mm -hmm. friends we love you yes, Lord. and we thank God for each and every one of you you be blessed, be blessed. in Jesus in name, Jesus name.